Holden can I expect from you if I'm an extremely needy author and I need to talk to you at least twice a week uh, at midnight? <laughs> that's, that, that's what I'm crying the hardest. That's what I, I have to pick up the phone <laughs> and talk to you for a minimum of two hours. <laughs> How much uh, personal attention can a, can a client expect to, to receive from you? I give a lot of personal attention, but I probably would draw the line at calls at midnight for two hours. Um, so, you know, not, you know, 95% of, of the communication, um, especially if it's a phone call, will be during business hours. That's not to say I never take calls after hours. I certainly do. Um, you know, if something's more urgent that needs to be talked about right away. Um, so I guess I'm kind of always on call in that respect. Um, but yes, communication is probably one of the most important things to me as an agent. So when I, every day I'm going through my regular inbox and I look at every single email I get and someday I'm getting 50 plus emails just in my regular inbox. Um, but you know, with clients, I like to be like, hey, even if I can't give you an answer right now on something, I'll be like, hey, I saw this, I'm looking into this, I'm gonna do X, Y, Z. Um, so all my authors know that I'm there, that if they have a question or concern or if they're, you know, worried about something that they can always talk to me and reach me. So back to being a useful idiot, my, my primary role and asking a couple of dumb questions. Um, I'm not assuming this is not true of any of your clients because they're all wonderful or they wouldn't be working with you. Uh, but just some agent etiquette. How often uh, is too often to be contacting and bothering your agent? Um, it, it, it really does depend on what it is. For instance, I'll have, there'll be periods of time where I'll have some clients where we're emailing back and forth multiple times a day. Um, especially if there's something going on, there's something we're trying to fix or, you know, work out. Um, you know, maybe that person's editor left or, you know, something happened with the editorial letter that they're not feeling good about. We might be going back and forth a lot in a specific day. But I would say that it becomes too much, for instance, if it's just checking in on like, hey, we submitted this yesterday. Did anyone get back yet? And doing that kind of thing every day <laughs> um, or, you know, yeah, anything like that. So, for instance, when I go out on submission, um, I always give my clients a submission list. I'm like, hey, this is who I'm sending to. If you have any feedback, you know, let me know. You want to add people, take people off. Um, and then if they're. And I'll, whenever I get any kind of response, I send that along to them. Um, so they always know, hey, as soon as I hear, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be the first to know. So if I get someone who's like always like, hey, what ha what's happening? Why haven't I heard anything? Why isn't anyone getting back to me? Um, and they're doing that consistently, that can be too much. But I mean, that's really the only thing. Because um, there's always a lot going on. So I feel like I'm in pretty constant communication with all of my clients, whether they're on submission or revising or what have you. It was probably it's a very been long two hours <laughs> since it went out. I mean, even if they had to stop for lunch, by now they should have read my my submission, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, th the thing is, too, though, like being on submission can be really nerve wracking, and I totally get that. Um, so, you know, sometimes I have to have those conversations where it's like, hey, you know what? It's okay. I understand you put your book out into the world. It's scary, but know that I have your back, and I will nudge editors you know if they're not getting back to me in a timely manner you know i'll let you know what's going on um and if you're feeling like really freaked out about anything we can always talk about it so um because i get that i i know what it feels like being on submission and getting passes and wondering you know if you're gonna get if your book is gonna sell what's gonna happen so i realize all those things about being an author too and i try to be there as much as i can are you aiming uh, primarily for more of a professional relationship or should I be calling and say, hey, my dad said something really discouraging about my writing this week <laughs> and I'm very upset and need to talk with somebody? I think it's a balance of both, honestly, with, with my clients where it's, you know, we've gotten to know each other and we have somewhat of a, a personal relationship too on top of the professional one um and that varies by the person and how open they are and you know if we've met several times in person in person and we've had long conversations we might be a little bit closer than clients i haven't met in person um but yeah it's kind of usually a a balance of the two and that's something that i gauge like i was mentioning during that off author call like that offer call do you know can we easily talk to each other um 
you know, that's definitely an important part of it too. And um, just in general, not not you specifically, uh, but if you're an author and you're starting to get the sense that your agent's not uh, as excited about your work as they once were, the Haunted Shovel didn't sell, the follow-up <laughs> about Narwhals didn't sell, um, and it's been five years and I'm still working on my next book, at what point should I start to think that this is a relationship that we maybe need to reevaluate? What are some signs authors okay. can look for? I feel like now I'm going to be looking in my inbox for a query about the haunted shovel. Um, <laughs> it's coming after this. I for can't sure. wait. Somebody's so writing it. <laughs> the esteemed um, audience, that one's free. You just run with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would always hope that if an that it was it would be a conversation where. Um, if an agent was ever feeling like, hey, I don't think this is working out for whatever reason, that they would say, hey, you know, ex author, why don't we get on the on a, the phone and kind of discuss things and where things are going and all that. Because um, sometimes it might be, you know, you've tried several books and maybe the author isn't growing editorial as much as as you think they need to to sell in the current market or there's um there's just something that isn't quite working they might be better with a different agent who does more of this than you do and you know maybe it's not something an area you focus on as much or they're kind of changing wh where they want to go with their career and you're not sure you can help them with that um but anything no matter what it is it should always be an open you know conversation between the author and the agents um you know never you know, as an agent or an author, just say, hey, you know, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm I'm leaving tomorrow. Like, I'm canceling our agency agreement. Um, I would always hope it'd be an open conversation. And it definitely is for me. If if I, you know, I had any concerns or, or anything, I would always talk to the author about it. Gotcha. So if I'm frustrated that my agent hasn't sold my book for a couple of years, and I just heard this amazing podcast interview with Krista Heskey. I'm like, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta try to see if she's uh, available. What's the best way to break up with the previous agent? Yeah, um, I would say, you know, like I said, kind of having that conversation and be, you know, at least letting them know this is why I don't think this is working out. You know, I'm looking for someone who's more editorial than you are, or I'm looking to uh write more picture books and you don't represent picture books or whatever it is um i think the best thing is to at least you know tell that agent you know this is why it's not working out for me i think it's better for me to you know part ways and you know go out and query again and find someone who's going to be that perfect fit and it's not it's not abnormal at all for you know authors not to stay with that first agent or you know end up moving elsewhere that happens all the time and that doesn't mean that that agent isn't a good agent um you know there's just something that maybe isn't quite clicking um so yeah again just being open and honest with with the agent you're working with before you know going out and looking for other agents um you know and just saying hey guess what i found another agent bye <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't do um, that <laughs> just text you <laughs> <laughs> this is over <laughs> to your <laughs> agent Welcome to Dumpville Population U. Which <laughs> is like ghost the agent, but stop responding. <laughs> what is this a bad relationship gone wrong? <laughs> I suppose if you're a, an agent, you take on a client that you find out has done that to their previous agent, that, that um, would probably have to change your uh, opinion of them. A hundred percent. Yeah. If you find out through the publishing grapevine, which we all, and you know, we talk to each other a lot and, you know, we hear about these things that happen um yeah if I heard that I'm like yeah this person like you know broke their agency agreements or you know they did something and they weren't supposed to do I probably would think twice about working with them 